solar panels, solar batteries, inverters? What's it all about? Can you actually save money? I really don't understand this technology. I've seen solar panels on people's roofs, but I don't really understand too much about it. It has lots of bad press. I hear people talking about solar batteries, but how does it all work? Now, you might think that I will start this topic talking about solar panels. That's the thing that can save me money, isn't it? Yes, solar panels can save you money. But let's start this topic with solar batteries. We call them solar batteries or storage batteries, but you don't even need solar panels to use them, and you will still save money. A battery is a device that stores electricity. Pretty much like when you recharge your mobile phone or start your car. You plug your mobile phone into a charger, it charges up overnight, and then you can use your mobile phone all day without being connected to the mains. Electricity prices in the next year are going to soar. The UK predicts a 50% increase in wholesale energy costs, which will in turn increase most people's electricity and gas bills by 50%. But not all tariffs are the same. You may have heard of Economy 7, storage heaters for your house. They heat up at night when power is cheap, and then release the heat when your energy costs are higher during the day. Batteries can serve a similar purpose. They can charge up at night, maybe the same time you are charging your electric vehicle or running your washing machine. This can save you a lot of money. During the daytime or during peak times, you can automatically release the power from your battery so that you can enjoy the cheap electricity you stored overnight. OK, I understand that the batteries can store electricity overnight, but how does it work? Do I just plug the battery in? I don't really understand. The battery on its own can't really do much. You would have to connect this to another device. We call this an inverter. You may have heard the term inverter, especially if you have solar panels on your roof. But the type of inverter that connects to a battery is very different. This is called a storage inverter. Let me try and explain the difference. An inverter is a device that converts DC electricity into AC electricity. DC stands for direct current. This is what we get out of a battery. DC is also the same as what you get out of solar panels. Thanks to Mr. Tesla, all houses, factories, almost everything in the world runs on AC electricity. This stands for alternating current. The reason everything runs on AC is because it allows the transmission of power across long distances. So, in order to connect your solar panel or battery to the mains, you would need to convert the DC electricity into AC electricity. This is done by an inverter. Inverters have been around for a long time. For example, a very simple inverter that you could buy from a car dealership with two crocodile clips that would connect to your car battery. This would allow you to plug in small appliances like a fan or a TV. A few years ago, inverters started to get much more sophisticated, especially with the boom of solar panels. The solar panels would all link together and connect into a grid using a grid-tied inverter, often called a string inverter. At the time, this was revolutionary. It meant that solar panels could connect directly to the mains electricity supply. When the sun is shining, the solar panel would produce power and it would feed into the mains electricity. We call this AC coupled or grid tied. If you produce more electricity than you are using, then the power would be fed back into the grid and you could be paid by the utility provider for the excess power. We call this export power as the energy is being exported out of your house. The problem is, the tariffs you get for export power are very little compared to the cost of installation and the energy that you buy when the sun is not shining can be expensive. So, fast forward a few years. SunSync and our partners have invented a new type of inverter called a bi-directional inverter. That sounds like a mouthful, so what is it? It is a device that connects between the battery and your mains AC connection. You can charge the battery from your AC when power is cheap and then discharge the battery to power your home or business when energy prices are expensive. This is done via a timer, which can be programmed manually or automatically. The inverter can be wired very simply. 
A single wire is all that's required to connect the inverter to your AC. We use an additional device which is included with the inverter called a CT coil. CT stands for current transformer. The purpose of a CT coil is to detect any power that is being exported and prevent it from feeding back to the mains. Now it looks like it's getting complicated. In simple form, the battery stores the electricity and the inverter connects that battery to the mains. This will save you a lot of money. If you've got solar panels, then even better, but it's not necessary. The energy from the solar panels can be connected to the inverter directly, or if you have an existing system, our inverter can be added alongside it. When the sun is shining, the excess power that you're not using will now be used to charge your battery. If you don't have battery storage, you may be selling your excess electricity during the daytime for a few pence per kilowatt hour. But in the evening, when there is no sun, you could be buying the power back from the electricity company at more than 20 times the price. Now you know what a battery is and also know what an inverter is. But which one do I buy? Let's first focus on the battery. There are three things you should know about a battery. One, the power rating and depth of discharge. Two, the life of the battery. Three, how much power you can charge and discharge at any one time. We call this the C rating. Generally, batteries that are used for storage are lithium phosphate. They are normally prismatic cells. Most batteries are sold on the kilowatt hour rating. Of course, the larger the kilowatt hour, then the heavier the battery. Sunsync batteries are sold in 5.2 kilowatt hour building blocks. This means that the battery can store and release 5.2 kilowatt hours of power. The battery size that best suits you depends on your energy tariff and your solar array. If you choose just to charge the battery from the solar panels, then you'll need to look at how much power your panels produce each day. I don't want to talk too much about solar panels in this video, but put simply, if you fit a 5 kilowatt solar panel array in the UK, it will likely produce around 7.5 kilowatt hour of usable energy per day. If you fit the same solar array in South Africa, then it will likely produce 25 kilowatt hour of energy per day due to the sun's radiance. These figures can vary massively depending on the location, time of year, and angle of the solar panels. There are plenty of websites online that will tell you how much power your solar setup will be expected to produce. But for now, let's focus on the batteries. Our most popular setup in the UK is to use a single battery. But depending on your power requirements, you can add more batteries to the system. This can be done at any time. All batteries are expensive, and one thing to consider is the life of the battery is very important. This can be controlled several ways. The output power, depth of discharge, number of cycles, and charging power. The harder you work the battery, the shorter its life will be. When installing a battery storage system, it's always best to use high quality batteries. Cheaper batteries will only cost you more money in the long term. You want your system to function correctly for as many years as possible. The next thing to consider is the C rating. This is the maximum power that you can charge or discharge the battery at. Our SunSync batteries have a C rating of 0.5. The batteries can be mounted on the wall side by side, in a cabinet, or simply floor mounted. The battery connects to the inverter by two cables, positive and negative. These are heavy cables, as the current going into and out of the battery is five times that of the energy coming out of the inverter. Nowadays, batteries are very sophisticated and have onboard computers that communicate with the inverter. This is called a battery management system, or BMS for short. Batteries must always be compatible with the inverter, otherwise the system can't work properly. The other side of the equation is the inverter. Our bi-directional inverters range from 3.6 kilowatts to 50 kilowatts in single and three phase. If you are AC coupling your inverter and using the inverter and battery to save you money, then a smaller inverter will be plenty. 
If you exceed the power of the inverter, then the additional energy would be taken out of the grid. However, if you live in a remote location with no grid connection, then a larger inverter is better. Always bear in mind that many countries have restrictions on the maximum size of the inverter that can be connected to the grid. For example, in the UK, if you use an inverter rated at 3.6 kilowatts or less, then you don't require any special approval. In parts of Australia, the same rule applies to 5 kilowatts or less. The inverter has a port where you can connect your solar panels. We call this an MPPT. This stands for Maximum Peak Power Tracking. What a mouthful. Why MPPT? A very simple example is if you have a 100 watt panel at 25 volts and 4 amp, charging a 12 volt battery, you may well connect the panel directly to the battery to charge it. The panel will then charge the battery at 4 amp. But there is a problem. 4 amp times 12 volts is 48 watts. The solar panel is effectively now only a 48 watt solar panel. Okay, that's a very simple example. You might be connecting 10 panels together in series and producing 400 volts that can be connected directly into the inverter and then used to charge the battery. The SunSync 3.6 kilowatt inverter has a massive MPPT. In other words, our 3.6 kilowatt inverter can handle 7.2 kilowatts of solar panels. That's enough power to charge the battery as well as providing energy to use during the day. Let's now focus on the SunSync inverter. 1. The inverter is connected via a single wire into the main fuse board and protected via an RCD and MCB. 2. The batteries are connected via a fuse and isolator to the inverter. In addition to the power cables, there is a data cable that provides the information from the battery management system to the inverter, such as battery condition and charge level. If you have solar panels on the system, then these are connected to the inverter's MPPT via a fuse and isolator. This is a very simple form of installation. Of course, we can go into much more detail, but the purpose of this video is to explain simple installations. The inverter has three connections on the board. One, the first connection is the grid connection. This acts as both input and output, and in most cases, this is the only connection you will use. Two, if you require off-grid power, then you can connect your fuse board to the load connection. In this mode, the inverter will provide electricity when there is no grid present. Three, the third connection is an auxiliary connection and can be used for many different purposes. It can be connected to a hot water tank to provide power to the heating element when the battery is full. It can be used to connect to a generator. So if you have an off-grid setup, this can switch a backup generator on and off to ensure that you never run out of power. We can also connect additional inverters to this connection, up to 50% of the power rating. Once you start to understand the basics and the magic of the SunSync battery and inverter system, then you can move on to the more sophisticated connections. You can connect multiple inverters, connect to wind turbines, three-phase balanced and unbalanced loads. The SunSync system has a very user-friendly interface in the form of a touchscreen LCD display. Also a mobile and PC app that we feel is better than anything else on the market. Energy prices are going to be crazy. It's never been a better time to invest your money in the SunSync battery storage system.